Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week um, I didn't have a chance to do any painting, but I did do some charcoal drawing. I made sure I made at least some time to do some sort of art. So like I said, I did a few drawings um, and I recorded a couple of them and those are the ones I'm going to show you in this week's video. And then this week I also wanted to again a message I've said many times before the idea that I believe anybody can become an artist, even a professional artist, and make a, a living as an artist. And to sort of demonstrate the point, I wanted to talk about a thing called the Tory School of Painting. Now in this case, school, not in the sense of, you know, a place where children go to study, but rather a group of artists who over some period of time produce a body of work, uh, a number of paintings, that, that sort of school. Tory Island um, is a very small island off the northwest coast of Ireland, off the coast of Donegal. It's probably the remotest inhabited island um, off the coast of Ireland. There are many, many islands, I don't know how many maybe even hundreds of small islands off the west coast of Ireland. Not all of them, of course, are inhabited. But Tory Island has been inhabited for probably thousands of years. It is, as I say, very small. It's about five kilometres long and about a kilometre wide, which is about three miles long and about half a mile wide. It really is quite small. There was a, an English artist called Derek Hill. Um, Derek Hill is probably best known as a portrait artist, but he also did landscape painting. And as a portrait art, artist, he painted many uh, famous people, famous politicians, royalty, movie stars, all kinds of different people. And he also did some commissions. So one of those commissions was a wealthy sort of Irish American businessman who decided to come back to Ireland to have his portrait painted. And he wanted it painted at a castle in Donegal, not far from where his sort of ancestral home is, his grandfather or great grandfather, I'm not sure which, who emigrated to the US. So now Derek Hill was going over to paint this uh, portrait and just completely by chance on the train he met and got talking to a man who turned out to be the lighthouse keeper on Tory Island. This would of course have been back in the days when lighthouses were not automated. There was actual people had to live there and uh, maintain them. So anyway, this guy was the lighthouse keeper on Tory Island. And he started telling Derek Hill all about how beautiful Tory Island was and that sort of remote beauty that it had. It was unspoiled. So Derek Hill decided that he would like to go over there, see it and maybe do some paintings. Now at that time, Tory Island was not set up for tourists in any way. There was no regular boat. Um, there was certainly no airplanes or anything went out there. There were no hotels, nothing. So he had to lodge with some of the locals. Um, eventually, he started going back each year, each summer for a few months at a time. Eventually, he rented a small hut on the island. Um, and he, every year, every summer, he went over there, stayed in the hut and did some painting. During one of the visits um, on a Sunday morning after mass, some of the local men went down to see what he was doing and looking at his paintings. And one of those men, local men, was called James Dixon. And James said quite openly, you know what, I think I could do better than that. So Derek Hill decided to take up the challenge and said, okay, I will provide you with paint and paper and brushes and you go off and do some painting, which James Dixon did. James then gave some of the paintings to Derek Hill, who took them back to London. Um, 
at a gallery called Portable Gallery, which sort of specialized in folk art and what's sometimes called outsider art. But anyway, they were able to sell the paintings. So the next summer, Derek Hill came back with an envelope stuffed with money for James Dixon. And I guess some of the other local men witnessing this decided they would like to get a piece of the action as well. So they started painting as well. And as I say, this school, this group of artists developed on Tory Island. Now I remember there was absolutely no um, contact with the outside world or virtually no contact with the outside world. Everybody on this island spoke Irish. Uh, English was very much a foreign language. There were no tourists, no very few visitors. There was, of course, no internet, no TV. I don't know if they had access to radio or not, but it was very isolated. So th the kind of art that they produced was not a sophisticated type of art. They weren't copying any other artists or anything. They were just doing what they wanted to do. So I guess their art, sometimes called primitive art, but I, I don't know, I that name is, I'm not entirely happy with that name. It sounds a bit patronizing sometimes. But anyway, they produce their art and there's still artists on Tory Island who are still painting and producing art um, these days in the 21st century as well. So anyway, I guess the point of the story was anybody can become an artist. You don't need that formal training. You don't need to go to art school and things. If you do, that's great. Um, but it's absolutely not necessary, in my opinion. And these people were, if not full-time artists, they were at least making part of their living as artists. And even if you don't go on to make money or try to make a living as an artist, anybody can produce art, whether it's painting, drawing, whatever. So anyway, that was the message that I wanted to reinforce with that story. These are the two drawings this week that I recorded. Um, I was happy enough for those. There was a bunch of other ones as well, some of which I put up onto my Patreon page. Um, details in the description box below if anybody's interested. But together with a, a bunch of other links and things. There's also a link to a YouTube video which explains this whole Tory school of art in much more detail than I did. Well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in next week's video.